to spend this moment with you, and I hope that uh, you, like me, can remember today what a, what a blessing it is to have these moments built into our week, wherever we are. I've just been especially aware the, these past few weeks of what a blessing it is to, to stop what we're doing and spend some time in worship and, and in the scriptures that God has given to us. It, it truly is something that, that enriches our lives and gives our lives purpose and direction, and, and I hope that it is being that for you right now as well. Uh, we're going to be continuing today in our series, the, A Journey Through Hebrews, that we began several months ago, uh, and today that is going to bring us back to Hebrews chapter 11, but not right away. We're actually going to be uh, beginning today in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 20, if you'd like to get out a Bible and be turning to that chapter. Uh, And the reason for that is that most of this sermon I'm going to preach today is built around a story, a true story. What would you do in this situation? This story came to me from a a fellow minister, a, a youth minister, and it was about a situation that he faced while teaching a parable of Jesus in youth class And apparently this parable really struck a nerve with one of the high school students in the class. Now this young man, the high school student, was a very bright student. He was very active in church. He was at nearly every church event, nearly every youth event, to every church service project. He lended a hand to every church mission trip. He signed up to go. He was really becoming quite a... a, a young leader in the youth group, and unlike some of the others in the youth group, when the minister, the youth minister stood up to teach, uh, his eyes did not glaze over like the donuts on the back table. He was hungry and listening to God's word. But then when he heard the words of Matthew 20, the look on his face said trouble. The youth minister was standing in front of the youth class, And these are the words that he shared with them from Jesus. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard, and he agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and sent them into his vineyard. Now about nine in the morning he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. So he told them, you also go and work in my vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about noon and about three in the afternoon and did the same thing. And even about five in the afternoon, he went out and still found others standing around. And he asked them, why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. So he said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to the foreman, call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. Now the workers who were hired about five in the afternoon came and each received a denarius. So when those came who were hired first, they expected to receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. And it is at this point that a curious look begins to show up across the young man's face. And as the story continues from here, that look grows more Sour. Verse 11, when they received it, uh, the ones who arrived first, they began to grumble against the landowner. Those, these who were hired last worked only one hour, they said, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work in the heat of the day. But he answered them, I am not being unfair to you, friend. Did you not agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the one who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am 
generous. So the last will be first, and the first last. And as soon as those last words were spoken, the boy in class could be seen shaking his head. He even turned over to the person next to him and very audibly said, that's just not right. That's just not fair. What do you mean, the youth minister said. What, what is not fair in this story? Well, these workers were there all day. They, they worked so hard. And for someone to come along at the very last hour and get the same thing as everybody else, that's not right. It's not fair. I mean, what's the point then to all of that work if someone can just come in at the last hour and get the same as us? What would you do in this situation? Like, what would you say to the young man who hears about the last hour laborers and says, why should they get the same as us? What would you say? Because I don't know if I would have thought to say what the youth minister in this story said. But I have been thinking about it ever since. You see, I think my inclination might have been to say something like, well, remember, God's grace is for everyone, and it's a good thing that you've been working hard your whole life. That's a good thing. You've been in church. You've been going to every youth thing. You've been in all the service projects. You've been doing great things. But that doesn't mean God loves the latecomer any less. That's what I would have probably said, something like that. And I think that that would have been well and good and true if I had said that. But that's not what the youth minister in this story said. Instead, what he said was, let me read another passage to you. And he turned to Hebrews 11. Now, Hebrews 11 is, of course, the passage we began to study last week in our little mini-series within the series, Faith Lessons from faith heroes, and last week we turned to the stories of these biblical heroes to learn something about faith, about faith and direction. Uh, Faith gives direction to our lives. Faith directs our steps toward God, for without faith, Hebrews says, chapter 11, verse 6, It's impossible to please God, for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Catch that last part there. That he rewards those who seek him. And today, as we return to this passage yet again, I hope to highlight something else about the faith that we see here in this passage. Another dimension to the lesson we may learn from these faith heroes, and it's something about the way that our God rewards those who seek him. Something about faith and the question that that young man raised in youth class. So the youth minister said, let me share another passage with you. And he began to read these words. By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain. By faith, Enoch was taken up so that he should not see death. By faith, Noah, in reverent fear, constructed an ark for the saving of his household. By faith, Abraham obeyed and he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw that the child was beautiful and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. By faith he left Egypt, not being afraid of the anger of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and sprinkled the blood, so that the destroyer of the firstborn might not touch them. 
By faith, the people crossed the Red Sea as on dry land, but the Egyptians, when they attempted to do the same, were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. And what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, and Samuel, and the prophets who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. The youth minister read these words in a quiet yet knowing tone, and then he turned and he said to the class, do you see what this is saying? Do you see what this is saying? And at this point, it was not clear whether the boy who had blurted out could see what this was saying. But the look on his face had changed considerably. Then the teacher got to his point. Verse 39. And all these, though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised since God had provided something Better for us that apart from us, they should not be made perfect. Do you see the point he was trying to make? Do you see the point this passage is trying to make? Not only does faith direct us, direct our steps to God, but also faith connects us to a long line of faithful people who labored for God, who sought the reward long before us. In the story of faith, we are not the first arrivers. All of us are latecomers, last hour laborers, working for a reward that God has still generously desired to share with us. In fact, God has made it so that we, the last to arrive, will share in the same reward as those who worked before us, so that apart from us, they should not be made perfect. And I don't know about you, but that changes the way I hear that parable when I think about it in this kind of light, maybe I'm quite familiar with putting myself in the shoes of the first hour workers, but maybe what I ought to do instead is hear the words of this generous master like the one who gets so much more than he deserves. What does it mean to you that faith connects us to this long line of laborers in the field who arrived on the scene before us. Well, maybe it helps us to see uh, one or two things. Two things that we can learn from the heroes of Hebrews 11. Two things about faith that connects us to those who went before us. The first one I would say is this. When we seek God... We stand on the shoulders of others. Our faith connects us to those who went before us. And guess what? We learn and benefit from that fact. We do. And it's a good thing that we do. We learn and we benefit from the courageous faith of those who came before us. And to me, the most beautiful thing of all is that even these heroes of faith that we uphold in Hebrews 11, even they can say this too. Even they benefit from the faith of those who came before them and stand on the shoulders of those who came before them in living by faith. Take, for example, Moses. We first hear about Moses in this chapter, in chapter 11, verse 23. But at the beginning of the chapter talking about Moses and his faith, it's not actually talking about Moses' faith, is it? What is it talking about? Moses' parents' faith. 
It was by faith that when Moses was born, his parents hid him for three months because they were not afraid of the king's edict. And it was their faith that paved the way for Moses' faith. And in fact, Moses' parents would not have even been in Egypt were it not for the faith of Joseph and Jacob and Isaac and Abraham before them. Even they also are connected to this long line of faithful ones who came before them. And then their faith now paves the way for Moses' faith. Their faith connects them to the ones who come after them. When Moses considered God's paths greater and was looking for that reward, he is standing on the shoulders of his parents' faith before him. And then from there, that connection just continues. So Moses, in turn, becomes the connector of faith for the whole people of Israel. Verse 29 talks about the people of Israel and their act of faith. Not just Moses, but the whole people, by faith, crossed the Red Sea. This was an act of faith on their part. But this act of faith was preceded by Moses' willingness to stand up courageously in faith. In the start of Moses' story, the people are not yet ready to do that. They are not as courageous as their leader when Moses first arrives again on the scene, but Moses' faith goes before them and paves the way for their faith, which they now show when they cross through the Red Sea. They are learning from Moses to be like Moses and seek the reward, but they are not the first to do it. When they seek God, They stand on the shoulders of the ones who came before them. And how much more so is that true of you and me? We are so privileged to live in the days after Christ himself and to also be able to look to the church with the example that the church sets for us, with the faith that connects us to so many heroes who went before us and paved the way. Some of those heroes lived and are still living in our lifetime. Maybe some are parents, like Moses' parents, who connected us to the faith that goes before us, who were faithful before we were faithful. Certainly, all of us have those in our church families who have gone before us, who are connecting us to the labor in the field. We're going to take up that subject again next week as we wrap up this little mini-series talking specifically about the faith that persists among us today. But for today, it's enough to just realize our place in the story. Faith connects us to those who went before us. And when we come to the work we get more than we deserve. We gain from the labor that went on before us. Which, of course, leads to the next point. Though we may, not be, though we may be the latest to arrive, we may not be the last. Because so long as life on earth continues, God's work on earth is going to Continue, And because of that, the faith that connects us to those who came before us may also connect us to those who come after us. And that ought to motivate us. It hardly changes the fact that we get more than we deserve. But instead, it simply challenges us to do for others what the faithful people before us have done for us. Prepare the way, model the work, diligently do our part, and then graciously welcome the next hour's shift into the work of God, knowing that we too were welcomed laborers when we arrived. Far be it from us to put down the future 
of God's church or to hold ourselves up as better than those who may come after us. Instead, we have this great opportunity to take up the faith that connects us to them and live it well today so that tomorrow that faith continues. Our challenge is to take up the faith that was modeled before us and live it well so that it will be modeled after us so that when our journeys are over, those who come after us will not, apart from us, be perfected. One day, all of those who labor for the Master will receive the same reward. And for all of us, it will be more than we deserve. Because all of us, in a sense, are the late arriver. But all of us also, in a sense, can be those who prepare the way for the next hour's shift, should God continue his work as he has on this, on this earth. And those things are possible because of the faith we see in this chapter. The faith that connects us one to the next in the work that God is doing. And these things are possible because we have a gracious and generous master who's willing to reward all who seek that reward. Maybe today you need to take a step of faith in your life to join in the work of God. If anything, what we've seen from Scripture today is that it's not too late to join in. Uh, God is inviting all who would come and obey and labor to join in so that they can share in the same reward. Maybe it's time for you to accept that invitation as it comes to us in the gospel, become a co-laborer with Christ and in Christ, washed clean of sin, connected to all who come before us and all who may come after. Maybe the lesson for some of us is humility, to remember that we get more than we deserve in Christ. And knowing the great debt that we owe to Christ and also to those who went before us. May we be humbled today and motivated today to do for others what has been done for us so that the labor of God may continue for many shifts to come. However, today you may be called or challenged. Let's remember the faith that connects us all as we sing this song of encouragement.